Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got the treat of the 2020 BMW M8 competition and a sound demo of its top level Bowers & Wilkins Diamond surround sound system. This is a $3,400 upgrade over the standard audio system in the M8 Coupe. It features 16 speakers and 1,400 watts of power. So, let's find out what that gets you. Before we get started, let's actually hop out and take a quick look at this beast. What do you guys think about this color? It's kind of grown on me a bit since we've gotten the car, but I still just don't think it lends itself too well to the sleek and sexy styling on this thing. But this is BMW's ultimate Grand Tour Mobile, 617 horsepower, twin turbocharged 4.4 liter V8. If you want to see more about the car, check out the links in the description for our full review. Okay, so we always do these audio tests with the sound settings set to their factory defaults. So as you can see here, go up to the top, we've got sound profiles. And what that does is it's kind of different levels of sound focus with kind of 3D settings. Studio is with all the 3D, 3D off. You can see here, and then there's concert, on stage, movie theater, says optimized for movie playback, sound distribution similar to that in a movie theater, and then lounge, which is apparently optimized for passengers in the rear seats, although I don't know how they're supposed to fit back there. Then you can also change the intensity of the surround. So if you go to like on stage here, minimal surround, full surround. We're going to do this test in studio because that is the factory default, but we'll experiment with some of the other ones later on. Also got your standard treble, bass, front, rear, left, right, fader, and balance. Let's play with those now. And then you do have a full-blown equalizer as well. Looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different areas you can change, so you can really mess with things. <laughs> so it's kind of cool to be able to fine tune your music just how you want it. Nice easy reset button right there as well. The volume settings, you can do some speed adjusting, volume, volume, different sounds of that sort of thing. All right, so for audio inputs in the BMW M8 Coupe. You've got your standard AM, FM, Bluetooth, and Sirius XM satellite radio. You've also got a USB-A port here in the front and a USB-C right there. And that is it, other than Apple CarPlay support. No Android Auto support, although it's apparently coming soon. This is model year 2020. No 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input jack, and no CD player as well, even though you can very clearly see where it would go. But these are just touch sensitive buttons for your Sirius radio or FM or AM presets. So that's kind of cool how you can just sort of touch them and it shows you at top what the preset is. So you can be like, oh, did I want Classic Rewind? No, I was looking for E Street Radio. Click that and then you're off. For ways to adjust the volume in, and tracks in the M8 Coupe, you've got a standard, very nice to turn, nice feeling volume knob here, good detents. You've also got volume controls on the steering wheel, little clickers. Then you also have BMW's gesture control, which has improved immensely over the years. Works very nicely. You can just twist your finger, fine tune right where you want to get the audio. Very good for a pandemic. You don't have to touch things as much. <laughs> For track selection, similar sort of deal. You've got track selection buttons here, track controls here. You can also use this rotary knob and it comes up in a head-up display. You probably can't really tell, but I get my track list and I can actually click on what track I'd like. Then you can also 
select the track using this rotary knob, scroll through your playlist, or just use the touch screen, choose a track, or you can actually cycle through tracks using the gesture control as well. So check this out. So you do kind of like a backward motion and then a forward motion. Once you kind of learn right where your hand's supposed to go, it's really not quite nice because if you're just driving along like this, you can just go, eh, switch to the next song. Then you can even use two fingers here to, wait, pause. I think it's like a straight, is it? I had it down perfect while I was driving earlier. There we go. I think it's this center area that's sensing it. Kind of silly, but also kind of cool. And then there's this motion as well. Brings up, it might not do it while the car's off. Yeah, I don't think so, but it brings up, uh, you can customize it, there we go. You can customize what you want it to do, but I have it set to bring up my M settings. Anyway, let's check out speaker grill locations here. So you've got one, two, three, four, five. Oh. Six, seven, eight, nine. Back. Doesn't really seem like there's any speakers back here. So the fact that I'm only seeing nine speaker grills tells me one of two things. There are a lot of speakers hiding behind those grills or this isn't actually the diamond version of the Bowers and Wilkins sound system. Unfortunately, I don't have a window sticker to confirm or deny. But let's hop on the build configurator real quick and see what the standard audio system has. Well, it appears to be the top level Bowers and Wilkins diamond system. So I guess there's just a lot of different speakers hiding behind those grills. But that's why we count grills and not speakers because you always can't always find them all. All right, let's fire this thing up and get it out on the road. A good launch here. <laughs> Gosh, it still amazes me how fast this car is. It's 
now that we're up here at highway speeds, we'll actually turn the music down let you hear what it sounds like. So let's go uh, normal, quiet exhaust mode, and we actually want quiet engine as well. I do know the speed limit, or the speed, oh, is about two miles per hour off, so I'll set it at 72 here. So as you can see, decently refined. I don't know about 170 or so thousand dollars refined, but not so bad. It's a little bit of tire noise, but a little bit more wind noise than I expected. I wonder if these windows are a little bit thinner in the competition model. So let's listen, listen to let's listen to this track to really bring out any issues in the sound system if there are any. track just further reinforces what I've been noticing on a lot of different songs and all sorts of different genres under this M8 sound system. And there's a hollowness in that, in the kind of the mid bass range that's really quite frustrating and it, it makes for music that doesn't really sound as crisp as it should. For a sound system that costs $3,400 on top of a $170,000 Sports Performance Luxury Coupe, I would be expecting this to be one of the clearest audio systems I've ever heard. I mean, it's got diamond in the name, for gosh sakes. But what it's missing is low, strong bass pumps. And you can hear... It almost just sounds like there's a low cut through this music that almost as if I'm listening to it on an old MP3 player or something. Let me turn on this song again. No, maybe this one. Once the bass kicks in, we'll see. It's got okay bass on like hip hop type songs. I really need to get a heavier bass song in here. I know I'm, that's on my to-do list, but some of my personal music, stuff that's copyrighted I listen to, and the bass thumps okay, but it's not until there's really low bass notes that you hear it much. See right there, that should be a pretty heavy bass, and it's just not happening. Right there, the notes that are hitting on the first and third beat of every measure, they're coming through and they're just like popping through the music much louder than they should be. They're not super well balanced. A lot of the songs I listened to, I, I made sure to listen to really high quality stuff, and there are a lot of different channels, and all the instruments are being given their own channels, and it's coming through decently clearly. So it's not like a muddiness that's the issue, it's, it's a lack of oomph, and it's a lack of power, and for a 16 speaker, 1400 watt system from Bowers and Wilkins, I'm really surprised that it's missing that. 
At first I was worried it was my device, so I switched and was using something else and it sounded the same. I was worried it was the music I was listening to, but now everything is just kind of missing that power. So what I would have to do driving this regularly is turn the bass up. And trouble up on the floor. So I'm having to turn the bass up uh, about three quarters all the way up just to get what I would consider to be the appropriate amount of power and sort of force in my music. So that's just kind of disappointing. Don't get me wrong, if this were an any vehicle sub $60,000, $65,000, it'd be an excellent system. But we're talking 180 grand at least as configured with this car. And for that, I'm just not having it. So objectively speaking, rating on this Bowers & Wilkins Diamond Surround System in the M8 Competition Coupe, I'd give it about a seven and a half to eight, especially because this audio system is just so easy to use. It's intuitive, you got the touchscreen, the good rotary knob, it's a good system. But objectively, when we're factoring in the price and the class of this vehicle, I'm giving it about a five and a half or so. It's just really, it's not even as good as I remember the Harman Kardon system being in the 840i Grand Coupe that we were in. So, kind of disappointed on that front, but either way, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that subscribe button if you did. Check out our other content on this car. We've got a fuel economy test as well as a full review. Check out all our videos. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.